Hi friends, my name is Nandita. I am from Andhra Pradesh. Now let us discuss about the leaf. Leaf. The leaf is a lateral general flattened structure grown on the stem. It develops at the node and bears a bud in its axil. The axillary bud later develops into a branch. Leaves originate from shoot apical meristem and are arranged in an acropetal order. There are the most important vegetative organs for photosynthesis. Let us discuss the parts of a leaf. The leaf is attached to the stem by leaf base and may, may bear two lateral small leaf-like structures called stipules. A typical leaf has mainly three parts that is leaf base, petiole, lamina and venation. Let us discuss about leaf base. The leaf is attached to the stem by a leaf base. It can see it in monocots. The leaf base is said to be sheeting as it's expanding and partially and wholly surrounded the stem. In dicots, the leaf base bears two lateral outgrowths called stipules. In some leguminous plants, the leaf base may become swollen, which is called the pulvinous. Leaves with stipules are called stipulated and those without them are termed as I exist stipulated. Petiole. Petiole is also called mesopodium. It is the stalk of the leaf. Petiole have help to hold the leaf blade towards light. Petiole arises the lamina high to the level of the stem so has to provide maximum required exposure to the light and air. Lamina. It is also called as epipodium. The lamina or leaf blade is the green expanded part of the leaf with veins and veinlets. It has a permanent median vein called the midrib. It protects the thinner lateral veins which in turn branch to form veinlets. The lamina is the set of photosynthesis, gaseous exchange, transpiration and other metabolic activities. The shape of margin, apex surface and extent of invision of lamina varies in different leaves. Let us discuss about venation. The arrangement of veins in veinlets in a lamina of a leaf is called venation. The midrib veins and veinlets are contain vascular tissue that is xylem and phloem for conducting water, mineral salts and food. Leaves mainly have two types of venation. One is reticulate venation and second one is parallel venation. Reticulate venation. When the veinlets form a network, then the venation is called reticulate venation. It is found in dicot leaves. Leaves of dicotyledonous plants generally possess reticulate venation. This type of venation is seen in dicots like goba, mango, jackfruit, etc. Parallel venation. When the veins run parallel to each other within a lamina, the venation is termed as parallel venation. While parallel venation is the characteristic of most monocotyledonous, examples of this are plants are calophyllum, gingiber, officinale, etc. This type of venation can be seen in monocot plants like banana, wheat, coconut, leaves of paddy, grass, etc. Now let us discuss about types of leaves. Now let us discuss about simple leaves. A leaf having a single or undivided lamina is called simple leaf. The lamina of a simple leaf may be incised but the incisions do not touch the midrib. The lamina can have various types of incisions which may reach up to half, more than half or near to the base or midrib. Compound leaves. A leaf is called compound when the incisions of the leaf blade goes down to the midrib. 
or to the petiole so that the leaf is broken up into a number of segments called leaflets a bud is present in the axil of petiole in both simple and compound leaves but not in the axil leaves of leaflets to the compound leaf a compound leaf can be of following two types pinnately compound leaf in this leaves the incisions of lamina is directed towards the midrib which is known as rachis leaflets are arranged on both sides on the rachis examples neem rose etc palmate compound leaves the leaflets are attached at the common point that is at the tip of petiole has in silk cotton phylo taxi the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or in bra- branch is called as phylo taxi it helps to avoid overcrowding and and provides energy to the leaf with optimum sunrise phylo taxi is usually of three types that are alternative phylo taxi opposite phylo taxi oral phylo taxi first let us discuss about alternate or spiral phylo taxi A single leaf arises at each node in alternate manner is called alternate or spiral phyllotaxy. Examples of this are china rose, mustard and sunflower plants. Opposite phyllotaxy. A pair of leaves arises at each node and opposite to each other. Examples of this leaves are pisidum gojava means goa plants etc. Oral verticillate phyllotaxy. If more than two leaves arises at a node and forms a oral it is called oral. These leaves of one oral generally alternate with those of adjacent orals in order to provide maximum exposure. Examples of this are Halstonia, Nerium etc. Let us discuss the modification of leaves. Leaves of plants are modified to perform different additional functions in addition to their main function that is photosynthesis. Leaf tendrils these are thread like sensitive structures which can coil around a support to help the plant in climbing. Examples wild plant sweet pea glory lily etc. phyllod it is a green short leaved and flattened petiole or rachis of a leaf which performs the function of photosynthesis examples australian asica acacia phyllodes develop usually vertical and possess fewer stomata hence reduced transpiration bladder the segments of the leaf modified into bladder like structures which trap small insects present in water examples are bladder wart picter it is a petiole modified into tendril to hold the picture upright the leaf plays is expanded to carry out photosynthesis the leaf apex is modified into a lid example nepenthes decidia etc leaf spines the entire leaf or a part of leaf may be modified into a pointed structure called a spine examples we can see in opentia plant leaf scales these are thin membranous leaves found at the nodal region each scale leaf contains an axillary bud in its axil examples are ginger Now let us discuss the functions of leaves. Leaves may have many primary and secondary functions. First let us discuss about primary functions. The most important function of leaves is photosynthesis with the help of sunlight and carbon dioxide. Leaves contain stomata through which gases exchange occurs and leaves are the site of transpiration. Leaves protect the axillary and terminal bud from mechanical injuries and desiccation. These are the some of the primary functions of the leaf.
Now let us discuss about the secondary functions of the leaf. Leaves store food as in their leaf base example onion leaves exchange into phyllo lobes to protect against transpiration storage of water in the cells of stem some succulent plants example aloe in salvinia one of each node is changed into roots that act as a balancer for floating in some leaves like euphorbia the young leaves are brightly colored to attract insects for pollination Thank you.